Good morning, everyone. I'm Lavan Ramos, and I'm actually not a homeless man. I'm here to talk about entrepreneurship. Now, entrepreneurship, what is it? It is basically the merging of two conflicting worlds, that of the artist and the businessman. It is the unlikely mix of the unpredictable creative set coupled with a universe ruled by money and the art of making money. Artists are often pictured as wild, starving, noisy individuals who only care about their voice being heard in the world, hence the monkey representation. See the resemblance? <laughs> Businessmen, on the other hand, are pictured always as fat, greedy pigs. Well, I'll leave that to your imagination to find out why. Now, what is art? How do you really define it? Well, that's quite difficult, but well, let me try. Art, simply put, is a representation of our world. It can be paintings, sculptures so, or other forms of self-expression that translate someone's views, aspirations, dreams, and thoughts. But does art just have to be pretty pictures or just carvings that we use as decorations on our walls? Definitely not. What about this? Look at this. Is this art? Well, yes. It's not pretty, but it is a representation of the world around us. This was done in Shemip during the evictions of the squatters area in the riverside by the government. This was the last wall standing of the former homes that was there, so we decided to spray paint a question on it to define the status of the society. These were also done by artists and other poets who posted poems and other installations in places where there used to be homes. So yes, art is not just a decoration, but more so a personal reaction of the artist to the world surrounding him or her. So a personal reaction, even if it just means reacting to the weather. So it's drizzling a bit. So what about business? How do you really define it? And how do you really define being an entrepreneur? Is business really just about selling or the art of making money and making some more of it? No. Business is also trying to fulfill someone else's needs, no matter how big or small. So with these definitions of art, and business and the world of artists and the world of businessmen in place, I can clearly say that entrepreneurship is all about smashing those stereotypes and bringing these two worlds together. So what's the deal? Why should we care about it? Well, that's because we all live in a world where art and trade are already married. There's no escaping art, and there's no escaping the art of selling art here in Cambodia. We all live in a kingdom where art and trade are inseparable, and also, importantly, a way of life. Take, for example, the simple folding of fresh lotus buds. That is sublime art in its purest sense. Imagine the amount of artistry that comes from every Cambodian kitchen when they prepare food from every Cambodian home. And even our homes. Look at how each tile is laid out perfectly to mimic fish scale. And see how architecture in its own pure self tells of different stories from details and all that. Now that is everyday art. And that's art that sells. 
So my own personal journey in entrepreneurship began here in Cambodia through the most sublime of things, through a bottle of water. I had my first exhibition at the McDermott Gallery in Shamreep a couple of years ago, and I had an artwork of a monk drinking water, and then with it are installations of water bottles of sti with stickers of the monk drinking water. Now, ultimately, the work got sold, but as it was an expensive piece, not many people were able to afford it, of course. But one thing I noticed was a lot of people also got connected with it and asked me if I am able to sell them just the uh, water bottles. So there went my big Eureka moment. I started selling water with art. The year after that, the financial crunch came, and a lot of the galleries in town, in Shamreep and Phnom Penh, closed, like the bigger galleries. Now, that got us thinking, why are we only selling art to rich collectors when there's also people from other financial capacities who are willing to take home a part of what we do? So the idea of bringing and selling affordable art came to being. So the next year, I opened, together with my friend, David Jamram Jadan, uh, he's also my business partner, the Art Valley, which we translated the gallery experience of art into a supermarket experience. So it's like, instead of a gallery, it's a supermarket for art, so people can buy art on an everyday basis so that it's cheap. So yeah, the idea came to us because yeah, there was a growing need to sell affordable art to everybody from all walks of life. We operated with the idea that art should not just be for a select few, but for everybody who believes in its spirit. We believe that art should not only nourish the soul, but also fulfill our daily needs, like let's say, selling water, or looking at time. And speaking of water, aren't we all hot in here? And aren't we all thirsty? So yeah, I've got a very special sale on going on today of water bottles. So anybody wants a piece? It's only 99 cents, I'm telling you. It's fresh. It's from the Alps of Cambodia, if there's any <laughs> Alps in Cambodia. But anyway, it's drenched with health goodies and goodness, and it's only 99 cents. But if you buy in the next five minutes, we'll add not one, not two, not three, but four amazing bottled water absolutely free. <laughs> wow, what an amazing offer. Did you get change from a dollar? Yes, I do. I will show in later on my PayPal account so that everybody can pay online. <laughs> Anyway, so why stop there? Why just sell water? Why don't we just, you know, instead of having people look at art in galleries, why don't we also put beds in galleries so that people would stay longer and they would build a better relationship with art? So the idea of putting up Hotel 1961 came to being. Together with my wife and a few other, other artist collaborators, we opened it last year in Shimreep. It's actually not a hotel strictly, but galleries with beds. So through time, an entire community of entrepreneurs rose all over Cambodia who operated with these three core reasons. One of them is legacy. Well, first and foremost, this kingdom has a very strong cultural connection and heritage to begin with from the temples of Angkor to a really rich tradition of music, dance, painting, sculpture. The ground we walk on is teeming with artistic spirit. One Cambodian artist who exemplifies this ideal is uh, the artist Le Moi Thiem. As an artistic director for Artisansi Angkor, Thiem was responsible for bringing back the artistic heritage of you know, traditions and traditional crafts back to the heritage of society through lacquerware, woodwork, 
and really fine detailing on silk weaving. When he opened his first gallery and studio in Shimri, what struck us was his ability to connect with all sorts of art lovers from all levels. Sure, he had works that fetched for tens and thousands of dollars, but he had also works which were affordable for everybody, like these bright elephants from Kompong Chenang were made of terracotta, but he applied lacquerware on them painstakingly with his team of artisans. And there were so many other things in his shop that were very, very affordable. Next thing is renewal. This is what we might call as a renaissance or a rebirth of the artistic legacy that was set before by the older generations. It is usually the younger generations that are translating these traditions into the light of the modern world. One of these artists is Barambang-based artist Mao Soviet, who recently opened his own gallery called Make Make. Sure, Soviet's works really focus more still on Cambodian art and Cambodian life, but what struck me is his ability to interpret it in fresh new materials like bottle caps, plastic, rattan, and a whole other load of other ideas and materials. From humble beginnings as an artist, he has evolved into a curator and an entrepreneurial persona, wherein he's harnessing the creative potential in his city with his new gallery, and also an artisanal workshop which employs many artists. And one of the biggest reasons why entrepreneurship is alive and well and will be strong in Cambodia is due to progress. After years of war and conflict, Cambodia has finally opened its doors to the world, and with it comes the image of potential economic growth. Industries are flourishing everywhere, and wealth is beginning to take hold in the society. And it's more so evident here in Phnom Penh. I mean, just look at how many Alexises are there right now. And one of the artists that exemplifies this is M. Rim, who's really embracing the cusp of growth to further um, progress himself as an artist. Trained in Paris, he started out as a painter, and it's just a plain visual artist, but he has creatively progressed himself into the world of architecture, interior design, fashion, jewelry design, and even lighting design to fulfill the needs of the need for creativity for a flourishing business or the industrialization of Cambodia. So what does this tell us? Well, it means that you and me, everyone here, has a big potential to be an artist, a businessman, or even both. Now, my job is to share to you my 50 or 2,000 reals worth of advice on how to become an entrepreneur. Now, how do we really become one? Here are five steps. First, you have to create and evolve. You have to keep on doing what you love to do, but bearing in mind that you have to grow from it and build from it and develop yourself into the next level. Keep on climbing that ladder. You can start small, but keep your dreams big. Next is that you have to change your perspective. Art does not exist in a box alone, and it does not exist in galleries alone. There's more to it. It is with your everyday relationship with yourself and the world around you. Now, let it be part of everything that you do. Collaborate. Find like-minded individuals or cohorts who can translate your dreams into bigger perspectives. Find a business partner or an artist that you can create, dream together with, fight, argue, and then create some more. The power of a collective is a force to reckon with, I'm telling you. Now, use technology to your own advantage. For example, if you have no money to start your own business or to pay for rent for a structure to sell your wares, then try fundraising online. Online structures and online portals like kickstarter.com or possible.org allow everyone to pitch their ideas to a bigger audience around the world and get funding. Somewhere out there is someone who is willing to help you. Also, you can start your own blog, 
you can start your own website, and even use social media from Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Use that to sell yourself, and what you do, the possibilities are cheap and endless. And lastly, make a living, but don't forget how to live. Never be a slave to what you do. At the end of the day, you should be able to sit back and smile because what you have done today nourished yourself and the world around you. So friends, get out of this room today with a renewed sense that the creative spirit lurking behind you can be brought out and can actually put food on the table. Sure, you may not be able to afford a Lexus or a BMW right away, but through time and persistence, you eventually will. All we have to do is share to the world that art is not just an indulgence, but an everyday need. However, due to recent events, I would like to show you today that art is not just an everyday need, but also a powerful voice for which our entrepreneurship can turn up the volume into. This was inspired by um, a French graffiti artist, JR, who was also talking in TEDx. He's always using his work as a voice to magnify, you know, um, his art to magnify his voice to the world. So these are these works, let me share to you works that were inspired by two big events here in Cambodia. One is the draining of the Bongkak Lake and the eviction of its residents. So I made an installation downstairs and uh, I have here some water which bears eyes of creatures and people from all around the lake. So that when we drink, we think and we remember of how fragile our environment, our world and our society has become. Remember the 13 women that got imprisoned weeks ago? The best thing I can do to share their plight is to put faces of countless other women and other mothers in matchboxes so that when we light one up, we are reminded that our world has become so dark. So I would like to present this as a gift to everybody, so please. Take one and pass it on. And later on, may we just... And later on, may we just light it with a thought that these are mothers and women that need their voice to be heard. Thank you very much.